Good morning Year 10, this is Miss Brooks with a quick screencast regarding your holiday homework. I've had a couple of people email and a couple of people ask me when they've seen me about it so I just thought I'd do a very quick one and show you how you can organize it and make sure you've done everything you need to do. So this is the handout you would have received otherwise it's been made available to you on the Google Classroom and I'll repost this when I post this video so you'll be able to see it on the Google Classroom um, and access it and make a copy of your own if you need. The first thing that you need to do is to start a Google Doc and I imagine most of you did this on the last day of school but if you haven't you can do that and then you need to label it with your surname and then the word oral research. So for example this is a document that you could use to organize your research and it's also going to be um, posted on the Google Classroom as well. So what you would do is you would say file make a copy and for example I would write Brooks M and oral presentation research and okay and it's just going to save it in whatever folder I was using before but that's fine. So in here you would identify, let's go back and check we're doing the steps, it says begin researching on the internet, look at news articles, speeches, websites, blogs, etc. that relate to your topic. So you need to have a topic. Now the list of topics was also available on the classroom I think, let me go and pull those up if you just give me a couple of moments I'll get them. All right, here we go, media issues. So each class has their own one of this. This one's Miss Stevenson's obviously. Um, should the Australian government ban the wearing of burqa in public? That you might be for or against that. Should homeless be banned from Melbourne CBD? The mayor, Robert Doyle's proposed that. Um, or sorry, is involved in a decision regarding that. That might not be very accurate. Um, should gay marriage be legalized in Australia, etc. So you can pick any of these, and if you want to pick something different, that's fine. Just email either Miss Stevenson, Miss Trotman, Mrs. Brown, or myself, and uh, we're happy to approve or give you some more clar clarification on it. But you can do something different from this list. But pick a topic. So maybe it is, um, I don't know, fake news being, let's pick this one. I could do that. So I'll put that in my, the big issue. Fake news being published by researchers to the media. My contention is that fake news is corrupting, is misleading and is problematic for teenagers or not even teenagers, for people who are not critical consumers especially those people who rely on their social media accounts to inform them about the news. So I would have to define what fake news is of course. So um, just as a kind of general point under here I'm just going to put that I need to define what fake news is because not everybody's going to know what that is. Um, you know, what is a critical consumer as well? I might I need to define what that's going to be in my speech. Um, social media, what does that include? And how do we get our news through it, etc. So those are all important concepts that I would need to consider when I'm writing my speech. And probably you need to define those important terms in the opening in your first couple of paragraphs. Now you're not writing at these holidays, but that's something you need to just think about in general, defining your key terms. Then affected groups. So obviously I'm going to be, you know, um, talking to or addressing my speech at regular users of social media, likely to be teens, but you know, um, other, you know, millennials, I suppose etc. That's going to tell me it's spelt wrong. Let's fix it. Yeah. Okay, and we also so people who rely on social media for their news. 
So whomever that would, that's a bit broader, but I'm being specific. I'm not just saying adults. I'm not just saying teenagers. I'm saying people who rely on social media for their news. The form everybody's going to be writing in is a speech. Your intended audience is going to be probably those people because you're wanting them to be critical consumers. You want to change them into critical consumers or encourage them to be critical consumers. Uh, right, so then we need to look at the two sides of the argument and that is um, regarding fake news. Um, is it good, is it bad, uh, What? how do we pick it out, etc. So you need to start listing those arguments which are for your contention. So no, so Facebook was responsible in the 2016 election of US Pres Donald Trump for the spreading of fake and of fake news. Let's just leave it there. Um, we could talk about the US Pres Donald Trump uses the label fake to discredit any news source which prints information that he disagrees with or um, paints his administration in a negative light. Um, so what that means is basically any news article or newspaper, for example, like CNN is a news provider that's been accused of being fake news by President Donald Trump. Um, they obviously print things that he disagrees with and so... Uh, he has labelled them as fake news because he disagrees with them, doesn't like what they're printing. And he's in a powerful position, so it's really inappropriate that he probably is using that label would be my um, contingent. So what are people who argue against me? So um, same thing. I'm not sure why it says contention two. Contention one, let's get rid of that. All right, listing arguments of those who oppose. So you might say um, it's the responsibility of the individuals as news consumers to be critical of what they are reading. They shouldn't accept at face value everything that they see on Facebook and other social media sites. Um, freedom of the press means that uh, providers can print freely. Something like that. Now, these are just my first thoughts, but what I then need to go and I need to go and find some facts and figures and other information. So maybe I would like to know about the percentage of fake news in the media in 2017. That might be an interesting fact. Um, what other things like where it is found and why it spreads because the common thing is that people like and share what they believe regardless of whether it's true or not. And so on Facebook, the more likes it has, the more popular it is and the more feeds it appears in. And so fake news can spread much more quickly or inaccurate news can spread much more quickly than the people who are trying to address it and stop it. Okay, so where it is found and why it spreads. I'd also want some expert opinion on this. So maybe a university professor, um, an expert in journalism. Um, etc. I would want some statistics which prove that, you know, um, 
fake news is misleading and it's a problem and um, especially for people who use social media. So um, I want some statistics about the spread of fake news on social media and how it is um, consumed by users of social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc. All right, and I might want to over here, who, this is a question I need to ask, who disagrees with me? Why? What are their arguments? So you need to do a little bit of research. I'm going to italicize and make red kind of the questions or the um, information that I need to go and find. So that's some research that I need to do. So now I've got these ideas ready to go. I need to conduct some research. So if you want to find some articles, and I think we've said on here that you need to find a minimum of three. So <clears throat> this is a table for four, but you can fill out three. That's perfectly fine. Um, of course, I would encourage you to do four. That would be better because you're going to have more information. So I'm going to do some research. I'm going to go social media, fake news. I'm going to see what comes up. So it says fake news is bad, attempts to ban it are worse. So this might be about um, something. I like Vox as a website and I also like the com the station, I also like ABC. So here's three great pieces I'm gonna um, I'm going to start looking at straight away. So right, I'm gonna use this one, how to help kids navigate fake news and misinformation online. I'm gonna use that, I know where I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that in my last argument because I'm gonna end with how we should be using the um, having established what fake news is and what the problem of it is, I'm then going to set about telling my audience, which is year 10 students, how they should navigate their social media and pick up on what is fake news and what's misinformation. So, right, I know I'm going to, I'm going to add a row down here. I'm going to insert row below and I'm going to merge those. And I'll add this to your template research. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to put, I'm going to list that as argument three. What steps do teens, my audience, need to make in regards to their social media new use and their consumption of news? So I'm going to look at that and find some um, arguments in there. So what I would do is I would print this out. Um, if you haven't got a printer, that's perfectly fine. Paste your link over in your research. So, right, maybe I'm going to put that as, because I think I'm going to use it in my third argument, I'm going to put it down here and I'm going to go right here. And it's called, let's go, how to, help kids navigate so that's the title so we can paste that in there and that's enormous so let's go and get some other information the date 26th of june 17 so we can put that in here 26th of july i think it was hold on no june Um, ABC News, author, it says the conversation on there, but Joanne Orlando, Western Sydney University. So she is a university professor. So um, when I'm mentioning this article, I'm definitely going to mention that fact because it's going to lend credit to my argument because she is obviously an expert in the field. And I'm just going to fix this up so it's smaller. Right. Um, what's the author's main contention? Now I'd need to read this and decide what her main argument is. And that's where I would insert that, um, point in there. What tone is she writing in a thoughtful, in an informed, in, um, an engaging, in a provocative, in an informative, you know, pick a tone and maybe two and pop those in there. 
So I think it's going to be informative just based on what I've read um, of the title and whatnot, but I would need to double check that obviously. What evidence? So she's got research published in 2016 suggests kids may focus on the content of social media posts than the sources. So she has got some great research in there. So I'm just going to post that little factoid in there. And you can see how that was hyperlinked. You can click on that and see her research. So um, I would go and look at that later. That's a summary of it, which is very um, handy. And you might go, oh, that's pretty long. Just have a little quick look through it and pick out the key facts. But I'm going to put that down the bottom as a research source that I need to look at. I don't know exactly how I'm going to use it yet, but I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm going to just put a brief note about students have trouble judging the credibility of information online research study. So I know what it is and I can come back and find some facts from that. Um, then what is the opposing point of view? I'm not sure whether that would be covered in here, but uh, you can see if she's identified that. And then, sorry, I've got a few too many windows open. So we've got that one already. We don't need that open now. What evidence of the supports the opposing point of view? So you, you've got to identify what you can see in terms of the opposite opinion. So anybody who disagrees with Joanne Orlando, has she identified that in her piece? She may not have, but if she has, put that in your summary. So you need to do that for four different articles. So another one I would do would be this fake news is bad, attempts to ban it are worse. I think that's an interesting one. So I'd pop that down here. Um, freedom of speech must be maintained. We can't ban fake news. We need to teach consumers how to negotiate. Um, well, let's go back to our language from our how to be critical consumers. So using the language from our contention earlier. So freedom of speech must be maintained. So we can't ban fake news. We need to teach consumers how to be critical. We've already said consumers um, of what they are reading and identify if news information is reliable or not. Okay, and I could add some information. So I would do Vox. I might put this here. And again, I think I'm going to use that probably in argument two. I think I'd use that one. But go and add the title, date, etc. So that's what you're doing. And once you've done that, that's your speech organizer. You don't have to organize it into your three arguments if you don't want to, but that's the way I like to think about it. So my first argument would be engaging the reader. So I'd be thinking about how to make it emotional or um, relevant to them. So I might do a, imagine you were a kind of scenario about them sitting at the computer, reading some fake news, sharing it, and then sharing, 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 and then how we realise that what we shared was fake or inappropriate. And if we had just taken the time to kind of look it up in the first place, we would know that it was fake, but we hadn't. We just shared it immediately. So I might do an imagine scenario to kind of paint the picture. And then my argument two would be about consolidating the points I'd made in my introduction. I would want to have some statistics some expert opinion, um, you know, studies, etc., to substantiate, which means to back up the ideas and claims that I had in here. So I would also be defining my key terms, you know, which were fake news, critical consumer, and social media. And I would be laying out the problem for the audience. What's the issue? What needs to happen? Then I'd consolidate it with facts, figures, etc. And then argument three, which is how you're going to close off your piece, is called um, 
it can be a call to action. But basically, how are you going to end? And like I said up here, I want to end with what steps do we need to take? So to address or to overcome this, the, the spread of fake news and misinformation, you or we need to, da, 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 and you're going to lay out a plan for how we're going to do that. So that's just thinking about how you can organize your ideas. Now, this has not taken me very long at all. We're at 20 minutes, so that's hardly any time. To fill all the rest of that out, you might give yourself maybe half an hour, an hour, depending how quick or um, how clear you are on what you want to say as your arguments. Now, the other thing or other task that you had to do was to create study cards or cue cards for persuasive techniques because remember you need to remember them so at a minimum you had to do these 10 I think on oh no, a 15 sorry following 15 words and then you had to do 10 of your own so total of 25 and they needed to look something like this so this is an example of the front and the back of a card so the first side I would put the definition so I've chosen hyperbole using dramatic, forceful language to exaggerate the real situation. Now, if the definition you read doesn't make sense to you, read some other definitions online, ask an adult, and put it into your own words because there's no point having a definition on here that you don't understand yourself. Then you need to, on the back, put some examples. So don't deny it, we're a nation of sad, fat drunks. So that's a massive exaggeration about the whole of the country. If I can't get a smartphone, I will die. Well, you're not going to die. That's unrealistic. I've told you a million times. Again, unrealistic. But you're doing it for a certain reason. So again, over here, we've got to identify what impact exaggerating in a persuasive piece is supposed to have. So it arouses, which means to raise emotions in the reader. And depending what the statement was, would depend what the emotion was. So Yes, I've said emotion on here very broadly, but when you write about it in an essay, you'd need to be a bit more specific. So sadness, um, frustration, anger, you know, when I've said, I've told you a million times, that's about being frustrated and probably angry at somebody. Um, it's the worst case scenario is used to play on the reader's fear. So don't deny it, we're a nation of sad, fat drunks, maybe to make us afraid of the state of Australia and the way that we've become or what we've turned into, maybe because of our drinking habits or something like that. Or it may be humorous to entertain or engage readers. So you might have um, something like this in the opening of your speech. If I can't get a smartphone, I will die. And then you would go on and have your... Um, build from that because you want people to kind of get a bit of a giggle out of it but it would will depend so where you can find all this information for how to fill these cards in is the back of the booklet that we gave you in class which is let me have I think it's this one here which we've given out so you should have in the hard copy so if you flick down I think it's about page 22 or so it's in there let's have a look oh they're the tone words but here we go Definition, example, intended to position or impact. That's what you can categorize that um, column as. Now, there's only one example there. You need to have two or three examples on your cards. All right, so 25 cards. Do the speech um, to research or research for your speech. And you can use this, uh, this template here, which I'll put on the classroom. And here's my kind of starting example. And this is how I'm going to guide myself in my future research, which I'm going to do after this. And here's how you can fill it out. So you make sure you cover off all of the points that Mrs. Brown put on here. The general issue, the author's main contention, the tone, etc. Okay, so you can fill that out on there. Put your links below. And I've thought about a little bit about how I want to organize my arguments. All right, good luck. Any questions, email us. And I hope this has been clear. Any and all feedback is always welcome on the screencast, so let me know what you think.